having a shot. Oh, shut that. I knew, I knew there was going to be something. I thought you were the man. So it's on you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you very much for attending today. My name's Colin Caldwell. I'm chair of the Parish Council here at St Margaret's. On behalf of Father Heenan and the Parish of St Margaret's, I would like to welcome you here for the celebration. There's a, a few announcements um, just before we start the Mass. Firstly, thank you very much for following the guidance of the stewards as you came in. As you can see, we're limited seating within the church and the service has been transmitted live downstairs into the crypt and across the road to the Carnegie Hall. During the celebration, eh, the Caritas pupils from St Columbus High School will escort the priests for the distribution of Holy Communion. Um, there will be priests at the front of the altar here within the church. There will be two at the rear of the church 
one priest into the Lady Chapel, two priests downstairs in the crypt, and four priests will be accompanied across to the Carnegie Hall for the distribution of Holy Communion. What we'd ask is please be directed by the stewards. The, the centre two rows will come to the front to receive Holy Communion. Um, the Lady Chapel, there will be communion dispersed in there for those within the Lady Chapel. And those of you on the side rows will be directed by the stewards to the rear of the church to receive Holy Communion there. Um, at the end of Mass, if I could ask those in the church to remain seated until the main party has processed out of the church. Um, those of you that have arrived by bus, the buses will be sitting in Lees Park Road, which is uh, across to the, the northeast of the church. There will be stewards outside the church directing you. Uh, sorry about that. Directing you to the bus park at the end of Mass. Thank you very much indeed.
us pray. O oh God, as we devotedly recall the translation of Margaret, saint and queen, distinguished with clear miracles by your power, graciously grant that, by her merits and intercession, we may be brought from toil to rest and from exile into our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael, pray for us. Angels of God, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Joseph, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, Saint Margaret of Scotland. Saint John Ogilvy, Saint Ninian, Saint Columba and Saint Patrick, Saint Roll, Saint Kenneth and Saint Modern, Saint Drosten and Saint Glastian, Saint Machen and Saint Modern. Saint Ethelreda and Saint Triduana, Saint David and Saint Oswald, Saint Giles and Saint Cuthbert, Saint Baldred and Saint Abba, Venerable Margaret Sinclair. Holy men and women of Scotland, Lord be merciful, Lord save your people from all evil, Lord save your people from every sin, Lord save your people from everlasting death. Lord, save your people by your coming as man. Lord, save your people by your death and rising to new life. Lord, save your people by your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the clergy in faithful service to your church. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in trust and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in your service. Lord, hear our prayer. May all Scotland grow in knowledge and love of you. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, the Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, as we gather before you today in honor of St. Margaret, our patron and our queen, may the example of her holy life inspire our civic leaders to protect and uphold the common good. May it bring mothers and fathers to turn their hearts back to their children and children to their parents. May it lead our nation to embrace again the virtue of mercy, especially towards the poorest and the weakest. 
May her powerful intercession on behalf of us, her poor children, lead us to be a people that are peaceful and prosperous, selfless and generous, in harmony with our neighbours and welcoming to all, especially the excluded and the stranger who live among us. We also add our own special intentions today, placing them before you on this solemn occasion for a moment in silence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Saint Margaret, Saint Margaret, Saint Margaret. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words 
in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery grant us we pray that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in a form of a cloud, and Moses stood there with him. He called in the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Lord, Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once in worship. If I have indeed won your favor, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, there are headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is in your order of service. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. 
Be united, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe in him is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a very great joy to welcome you all to Dunfermline for our St. Margaret's Pilgrimage Mass. I'm grateful to the parish priest, Father Chris Heenan, and to the faithful of St. Margaret's Parish, the musicians, the singers, the helpers, the servers, the volunteers, and all the priests and people of Dunfermline for their welcome and assistance today. I'm also grateful for the friendly hand offered us by the minister and parish of Dunfermline Abbey. Thanks go to my patient MC, Father Jamie Boyle and Father Kevin Dow, and to all the civil and police authorities who have worked hard to make this a happy, safe, memorable visit to Dunfermline. Today we honour a woman who is the pride of Scotland. We honour her goodness her strength of character, her patience, her mercy, her determination, her sense of justice, her holiness. And we come here today to learn from her for our own sake and for that of our church and our nation. We venerate her memory and we pledge ourselves to work as she did for the peace and prosperity of our land. Although she lived 900 years ago, Margaret's positive and life-giving impact upon our country's political, social, and spiritual life can still be felt to this day. This immediately teaches us several things. 
that the power of goodness and holiness must never be underestimated, that leadership is a call to service of others, not of self, that love and mercy really do last forever, and that one good person can make a difference. The selfless, benign, beautiful example of St. Margaret and her continuing influence upon us is a simple proof of all of those things. And yet we do underestimate the power of goodness. We think it often looks weak and disarmed, but simple goodness can change people's hearts, even if it's a growth that is sometimes hidden. Goodness is its own reward, although it may not be a reward that is felt immediately. Again, we casually lament the quality of leadership in our days. Compared to other times and places, though, there are many fine people who enter political life for the right reasons, who genuinely succeed in serving their fellow citizens. But too often, good ideals are made to give way to the democratic imperative to get elected first, and then compromises and the ersatz imitations take the place of what is truly right and just and good. But sometimes one person can make a difference. One person in the right place and time can change the game. Queen Margaret was one such person. Providence sent her to Scotland, and a transformation of our land started under her good and gentle guidance. Let's honour, therefore, her goodness, her strength of character, her patience, her mercy, her determination, her sense of justice, her holiness. Let's honour her by imitating these virtues and by praying the good Lord through her intercession for a double share of her spirit for ourselves and for our whole land. Today, as you'll have noticed, also happens to be the Feast of the Blessed Trinity, which is celebrated today throughout the world, at this point just after the end of Eastertide. The readings we've just listened to are those of that feast. They help us to reflect upon the mystery of the Trinity, of God who is one and who is three. He reveals Himself in this way in the sacred Scriptures and in the person of Jesus Christ, true God and true man, crucified and risen. And as Eastertide draws to a close, we recall again that this is how God chooses to tell us of Himself. For example, in that first reading, Moses receives the Ten Commandments from the Lord in a central moment of salvation history. In consigning the Ten Commandments to Moses, God describes Himself as a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. This self-description reveals the whole point of the Ten Commandments. They are to help us to be what we are meant to be. They are to help open us to be led by a God not bitter and angry and naysaying, but a God of tenderness and compassion a God slow to anger and absolutely abundant in mercy. Here is the true face of God. And in reply to this moving revelation, Moses says, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, Israel is a headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. Moses begs the Lord to accompany Israel on its journey as a people. Sure, he says, we're hard going, but forgive us our sins and adopt us as your heritage. He prays to the Lord in a way that we could even place in the mouth of St. Margaret praying for Scotland. I can just imagine her looking out her window over Dunfermline and saying, Lord, I know we Scots can be hard going, but forgive us our sins accompany us on our journey, and adopt us as your people. 
The second reading for today's feast is a short passage from St. Paul, a few lines with a bit of urgency about them. They're a word of loving encouragement, a final important word to someone you're not going to see again. So you have to say it all quickly and succinctly. So almost breathlessly, Paul says to his friends in Corinth, I wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And if you do, the God of love and peace will be with you. What an affectionate, straightforward, but definitely urgent request to his brothers and sisters in Corinth. Again, I can imagine St. Margaret saying the same thing if she could speak to us today. I wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And if you do, the God of love and peace will be with you. In fact, St. Margaret's biographer, a man who knew her personally, quotes her, saying, They that fear the Lord shall not want want in anything that is good. And if you love Him, He will give you prosperity in this life and eternal happiness with the saints. Those are her own words. These are words from her own spiritual experience and are worthy of our attention and respect. Finally, the gospel reading today is a pithy summary from St. John of the whole of God's plan, of all the good that God wants for us. St. John writes, God loved the world so much that He gave us His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. The offer of salvation made to all, no one left behind, no one neglected, no one too low or simple or poor or contemptible to be beneath the attention, the affection, and the assistance of God. St. Margaret understood this too. She embraced it, and she lived it, and she translated it into action at every level in our country. In these days when we must contemplate significant changes around us, let's draw upon the example of St. Margaret and learn again to be virtuous men, godly women, grace-filled children. In doing so, we will encourage others to goodness and holiness. We will lead as servants of others, not of ourselves. We will show that love and mercy do indeed last forever. And we will know, just as St. Margaret did, that one good person really can make a difference in our beloved country. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather to honor St. Margaret, patroness of our country, we also seek her intercession as we bring our prayers and needs before God, the Father of the poor. We pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Cushley, and all bishops. May they, like St. Margaret, be filled with love of Christ and reach out to his poor. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our parishes and local communities. May we grow in love of Christ and in service of our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families through the intercession of St. Margaret. May our families be true schools of faith, and may we grow in love for each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those exiled from their homelands. May they find welcome and support in their adopted communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, we pray that the beauty and truth of the faith that was a guide and inspiration to St. Margaret may be rediscovered in our country. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who have died, for our deceased priests and parishioners. May they rejoice in God's presence and in the company of St. Margaret and all of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, you have blessed us with St. Margaret as an outstanding model of Christian motherhood. Through her intercession, we ask you to increase your grace in us and to answer the prayers that we make to you in faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord God, this oblation of our service, and make of Make by it of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim to and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Lord, 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Margaret and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all this. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your, e your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Those dreaded words, please be seated. But don't worry, you're not going to get another long sermon. Not that the sermon you had was very long, said he, digging himself out of a hole. <laughs> St. Margaret died on the 16th of November, 1093, and when she was canonised in 1249, that became her feast day. The following year, in 1250, on the 19th of June, they translated her relics. And we all know that because the weather's so much better in Scotland in June, that became a wonderful feast day, a day of pilgrimage as well. It really works, doesn't it? The rain's a bit warmer in June. And that is uh, what we commemorate today, that day when our, our relics were translated to the new shrine along at the Abbey. It was the first recorded instance of the organ being played in a Scottish church. So there's probably something that you might not have known. So thank you all so very much for coming along today. Uh, it's wonderful to see so many people. Thanks to everyone who's here in the church, underneath in the hall, in the Lady Chapel there, and also across in the Carnegie Hall. I'll bet in that day of the translation of the relics, they didn't have to contend with interference from the Carnegie Hall sound system. <laughs> but we're used to it here. During the pantomime season a few years ago, I was preaching my sermon and all I heard was, Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> and then, he's behind you. <laughs> well, he is behind me today. <laughs> After Mass is finished, uh, there will be an opportunity if anyone would like to venerate and to receive a blessing from the relic of St. Margaret here, either as an individual or as a family, so please, if you have time, please stay behind for that. Uh, you're thinking one thing. He's forgot the collection. <laughs> I may look stupid. <laughs> there will be a retiro collection as you leave the church, the hall, and the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> So don't worry, you've definitely been to Mass. And that goes to defray the, the expenses eh, for today. So thank you very much. We also recognise today the generosity of the Scottish Catinian Association who have donated, eh, through the kindness of Brendan Berry, the artist, this painting of St Margaret that's entitled St Margaret on an errand of mercy. And I would like to ask His Grace the Archbishop to bless and dedicate this painting. And thank you to the Catinians and to Brendan for their generosity in recognising the importance of St Margaret to uh, the church and to our country. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a very safe journey back home, and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you. Please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, we bless you for you alone are holy, and because in your compassion for sinners you sent into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of holiness. He sent the Spirit to sustain his newborn church, a voice that teaches us the secrets of holiness a breeze that strengthens and refreshes, a fire that sears our hearts in love, the seed of God that yields a harvest of grace. Today we praise you for the gifts of the Spirit bestowed on St. Margaret of Scotland, in whose honor we dedicate this image. May we follow in the footsteps of the Lord, keeping before us the example of St. Margaret, and grow to a maturity measured not by nature, but by the fullness of Christ. May we proclaim his gospel by word and deed, 
and shouldering our crosses daily, expend ourselves for others in your service. As we carry out our earthly duties, may we be filled with the Spirit of Christ and keep our eyes fixed on the glories of heaven, where you, Father, receive those who will reign with your Son forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.